University courses can be said to have an atmosphere, a look, a sound, a feel, a set of practices that help develop climates of and for learning. Participants in university courses all have a role in creating this atmosphere, the learning climate, if you will. And we all bring expectations to that learning space, whether these are about what and who matters, how learning should or could happen, about what roles and responsibilities the players in this learning space should or might take on. With forays aligned design, we begin by thinking about atmosphere, with thinking about who is gathered together, where they are in their learning, and where we want them to be as learners during, after, and beyond a particular course. Atmosphere requires presence, and we'll look at how these three elements of presence factor into a course. It's helpful to think about atmosphere and presence in these three ways. There's a persona, a personality to a course, to a person, to a teacher, to a student. We have interests and communities and affiliations. We have ways of teaching and of learning. Um, we have uh, ideas about how we should work together, what it means to be social, how we interact. We have ideas about what instruction should look like, who has particular roles and responsibilities. We're going to look at each of these three in turn as an idea and offer some practices. In the first, persona. We can think about enacting the persona of a class by going to the profiles that are offered within a learning management system. These are opportunities to provide a picture, to provide a bit of narrative, to uh, list other interests, to point to websites that you might manage or blogs that you might do. These are open to both learners and teachers. A profile is a chance to fill in that space when we're in a discussion forum. It's a chance to have something other than the small circle of empty egghead that often shows up without this. It gives students something to look at when they see each other in an online discussion. It helps teachers to make connections between the face we see in a profile and the face we see in a classroom. These can help with the classroom climate, as can things that we do in the classroom to shape that climate. Having uh, stickers on my computer is one way that I let students know my persona. It helps establish some climate. These are things I love to think about. Music, art, um, Doctor Who. There are kinds of things that help me to set up an ambient learning space within the classroom and to reflect who I am. There are also ways that I can do this through the course meta communication. How I talk with learners in the course materials. They're my audience. I write to you, the learner. I don't write to my colleagues. I don't write in a uh, sort of um, ambiguous third person uh, to address things that we'll do in class. The syllabus speaks to my learners. What are the questions you will consider? What are the interests that you bring? What are the aims you will meet? What are the things that are in place to help you be supported as a learner? You can also provide a course site that has narratives and visual cues. Whether using a module or a page set up in Canvas, you can change the wording that shows up in the little elements of a module and that show up on a page to help students move through and know which thing to do first, which thing to do second. You can provide visual cues so they see something and are targeted to, oh, that's where I go to reading. Or their screen reader can pick up that visual cue with its alt text that says reader, reading start here. The course meta communication includes the learner instructor uh, emails. I often teach my students how to approach me in writing through a first email I send to them. And at the bottom I say, please use the same format when you respond to each other and to me. A course meta communication is also how I model learning to learn, where I stop and say, you know, here's where some students have had difficulties in the past, or I remember learning this and having these difficulties. Here are some strategies that I have since used. Or this is what I see my colleagues doing as successful practitioners when they come to a problem like this. Here are some strategies for you to try out in your next homework. Part of presence is that social presence, setting up the climate, setting up the space, naming how we'll interact. Every university offers a set of policies that they would like teachers to incorporate into their syllabus. 
What's often also written into the policies is that it's more important to name the policies in some way than to articulate them directly as the university provides them. So take a look at what's actually institutionally required. At my institution, it's 11 specific things that need to be mentioned and addressed within a syllabus. The university offers wording, does not require faculty to use that wording. So then I can begin to think about what's the role of these particular policies in my course? What are the, what's the role of a plagiarism policy, of a student conduct policy? Well, those are about having a civil space and what it means to participate. So I take a look at the wording that I use. I refer through a link to the university's policy. But in my own text, I describe how we will conduct things in that class to meet the goals of the policy. And I place those pieces about participation within the part of my syllabus that focuses on participation, not at the end, not separate from activities that I outline that we will do in a day-to-day, class-to-class way to um, inculcate and engage in participation. So how do you signal those social things of participation beyond your policy? One is to use narrative that describes participation as a key component of learning. That learning is social. It happens from people talking to each other. That can be incorporated into your narrative and make a point even more than student conduct code or student plagiarism uh, warnings. If it's an ongoing course, part, course component, then we can think about participation as something that we engage students in doing as early as they're preparing for class homework. So that what they're doing for homework helps them to become ready to talk with others. This is especially good for introverted processors, for students who are working in their second, third language, for students who don't speak academic as a first language, and that's most of our learners they get a chance to prepare materials and think about how to discuss it with others. Participation can also be defined in this policy and setting presence through social interactions. As you talk about how students will work together and why you're having them work together and how you will observe this work and respond to it in your student-teacher interactions. You can also talk about participation in your policy as something that is going on outside of class. As students work together in study groups, setting up ways for them to make connections with each other, to think about how their assigned groups work outside of class and participate perhaps through online resources um, in order to continue to talk and participate in an asynchronous way when they can't meet together in real time. Most of all in this, remember that participation, if you want to incorporate it in your policies, is a regular pattern. And by having the policies as an integral part of the syllabus in language that's your own, you set up the atmosphere for participation in your own classroom and put in the policy understandings that you have. One of the ways of signaling that regular pattern is to think of the cadence, the, pa the pace, the flow of your course. It can be visually represented as in the diagram that's on the screen to set up what happens on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, et cetera, through the week. It can also be articulated as a short narrative section within your syllabus. The instructional component, a thing to remember, is the what and how and why of learning. You're paying some attention to how you develop learning and how learners will do the learning. An instructional presence isn't that teachers are available 24-7 or that students work all out 24-7. An instructional presence is helping students to understand what their roles are and what their responsibilities are. And also to think about how accessibility is built into your course. So the instructional presence atmosphere, what do you expect students to do as learners? What's it look like to be a learner? What are the responsibilities? What will you do to help them foster that responsibility? What will you do can include making documents that are accessible using the six core skills of accessibility articulated by the Accessible Youth site at the University of Minnesota that's included in our resources. 